first of all, let me join others in thanking the host, the government of Morocco, hosting this conference. But again, thanking the FDB for organizing this forum and provide a platform for us to be able to share the successes, stories, but also challenges, and maybe we'll come up with the possible solutions of the uh, challenges that face Africa. Having said that, let me say yes, Tanzania is very strategically located at the east of Africa, and uh, we are uh, sharing borders with eight countries, and so all these eight countries depends on Tanzania on transportation of people and goods through various ports of Tanzania. But then before going to the ports, let's say connectivity is the major issue in Africa, and that's a gap we are having. Africa has to invest a lot in connectivity. Uh, talking of connectivity, um, I once attended a conference in Senegal, and reaching Senegal, I had to go to Paris first, going to Europe and then coming back to Africa. So that's a problem of connectivity in our continent. But in Tanzania, how are we dealing with the connectivity, working with all these eight uh, neighbors? We are using roads. We have invested a lot in connecting Tanzania with our eight um, road accessible countries like Zambia, Mozambique, uh, uh, Malawi, um, and others who, are, uh, who can be assessed by roads. But we are also using water transport, ports. Tanzania has got uh, say seven, six, seven ports. We have a port of Dar es Salaam, which is a major one, and a main gate to eastern and central and southern Africa. But then we have a port of Tanga, which gives access to the northern part of Tanzania, then to, ne to the neighboring countries. But we also have Mtwara port, which is opening the, which is opening the southern corridor of Tanzania and going to Malawi. And then we have the Northern Corridor. The Northern Corridor is Tanga, I've, I've mentioned it. But we also have Zanzibar, Zanzibar Port, which is an island. You can go everywhere from Zanzibar. But we also have ports in our lakes. We have Mwanza Port in Lake Victoria, as well as Kigoma Port in Lake Tanganyika. And Kigoma can take you to DRC easily. So we are working on all these connectivities. Uh, we also have railway networks. Railway networks, again, the ports are connected to the rail networks. So we have the northern part, northern uh, railway. We have the central railway, but we also want to establish the northern one. The central railway, this is the upgrading of the um, Asian railway and we are now constructing the uh, standard gauge railway, which will connect the port of Dar es Salaam to Burundi, through DRC, also Uganda. Um, we are going to be connected with this uh, port. We are also connected by air. Air Tanzania is now uh, uh, transporting people and goods to the neighboring countries and even outside Africa. So that's how we are, we are connected. On abundance of resources, yes, Tanzania is very much gifted. We do have critical minerals um, for technology intensive industries. The minerals which the world, is, um, the world is looking for nowadays. We do have about five of them. Tanzania has got nickel, has got cobalt, we have graphite, we have lithium, we have others. So Tanzania is well, well um, gifted with minerals. But again, the energy sources. T 
Tanzania is having gas, we have solar, and we have water, hydropower. So energy sources, Tanzania is very much uh, endowed with energy sources. The only thing now is to invest and make sure we do have enough power for industrialization and other development activities. But we also have an arable land for agriculture. So we are well, well um, um, blessed on the natural resources. Um, for intra-African commerce, yes. Uh, as I said, we do have all these connections for transportation of people and goods, and so it facilitates it, um, African trade and um, investment. But again, we um, invest heavily in human capital development and also in diversification and modernization of our economy. The technology and digital innovation, we have given a priority to it, we have started, we, are, uh, we have established several, several start startups for the youth, for them to be able to engage in various sectors coming with innovations on how they will work on pre uh, several uh, sectors. Important thing of all is the embracement of private sector. For us, we know that private sector is the only engine of economic growth. And so we, we are working with the private sector. We have created an environment, favorable environment, for private sector to thrive in our country. And so we are receiving a lot of private business in our, in our country. But having said all that, I'm emphasizing on two major areas investment on, uh, on, uh, on infrastructure, on transportation of people and goods, and this is what is going to be discussed today in the boardroom, and I welcome all these participants to be with us and listen to us on what we need to pre present in the boardroom. Uh, having said all that, important thing for us, and this is a lesson people can learn from Tanzania is um, political stability, peace and security of the country. This is, Tanzania is very, very well known on this. And so to make Tanzania continue to be a peaceful and stable country, we have come up with the 4R philosophy. And by 4Rs we mean um, reconciliation, resilience, reforms and rebuilding of our nation. As everybody is aware here that Tanzania is a democratic country, and so we do have about 17 political parties. So election is our way of um, giving permission to one party to run the country. So after election, we all have to sit together and agree on which way we want to develop our country. So we reconcile if any wrongs done, we have to reconcile, but then uh, we have to have huge resilience. And again, uh, together we make the reforms and we rebuild our, our, our nation. So the major uh, um, lessons could be two. Investing in uh, infrastructure, hum three, human capital, and peace and stability of the country. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, you have made history as Tanzania's first female president and have since been steering your nation toward inclusive economic growth with a particular focus uh, on em empowering women and youth. As Tanzania is embarked in this journey, continues to integrate technology and innovation within its industries, and embarks on a significant uh, infrastructure uh, project, could you share with us how you are balancing the rapid pace of this economic modernization with the imperatives of sustainability and social inclusivity, especially in sectors like manufacturing and agribusiness, which are pivotal for Tanzania's transformation? 
thank you so much. Um, yes, I should thank God for giving me this responsibility. And um, as a woman, as a mother, and a grandmother, I've decided to take some of the issues as my own agenda. First of those issues are the sectors of education and health. Recognizing the role education and health are playing in um, economic growth, I have decided to intensively work on these two sectors. So on health, um, major work has been done by the previous phases of the government, but then I've decided to work more on the quality of health, which is given to our people. So provision of health centers to the level of, uh, to the village levels, by provision of um, uh, medicines and drugs, health equipment, treatment equipment, and the manpower to serve the people. That's one point. And on health, I thought um, to embrace health for everybody. And so we engaged in universal health insurance for the whole country. This is what we are working on now. And also issues of nutrition. Uh, we thought um, these are important issues for the betterment and for the growth of our youth in Tanzania. Uh, issues of maternal and infant mortality are as well part of my priority areas. But then on education, uh, Tanzanian government has decided to give free education to everybody. But then, um, of course, uh, having free education is one thing, but still there were some challenges which makes um, children of Tanzania to drop out of the... Uh, formal system of education. So we have decided to give the second chance to them, especially girls who dropped out for any reason to come back to school and continue with their former schooling. And we have done that and the girls are back to school. But also, <clears throat> uh, we have dedicated special schools for science subjects for girls. So we have special science school for girls because we have noted the gap uh, in, in, in science uh, sectors. Girls are not very well uh, involved in there. So we have special schools for girls. Also the vocational training centers because we are talking on the fourth industrial revolution. We have to have employable workforce. So we have uh, 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 established uh, vocational training centers throughout the country and the youth are being trained in there. Apart from that, I think sustainable development for women and youth is again very important subject and we are working on uh, uh, various issues catering for their sustainable development and one very important issue is involving our youth and women in the program called Building a Better Tomorrow for Youth and Women. And this is about uh, engaging the, this population in agricultural activities. And by agriculture activities in Tanzania, we mean crop farming, fisheries, livestock keeping, and um, honey uh, 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 making or honey farming. So we have created a program which is called a Building a Better Tomorrow. And this is about modernization and commercialization of productive sectors, agricultural sectors. And this includes also heavy investments in mechanization, irrigation, agro-processing, 
and digital platforms for, for youth. And the digital platforms uh, is looking on access to agriculture extension services, marketing, also incomes, source of uh, or calculations and getting incomes for the smallholder farmers. So in here, we are very thankful for, uh, to the uh, African Development Bank, which is giving a very substantive support in this, in this program. And a lot of our youth are now engaged in this program, and we hope by 20, 20, 2030, agriculture sector is going to have a lot of contribution to our GDP. So that's uh, about technology and uh, 